What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Cool Colas here, and you are now tuning into a new episode of the Pro Black Blurred Kingdom Podcast. On today's episode, I'm going to start getting into topics that are kind of related to this channel, but also are a little bit different. You know, a lot of times when I talk about different things on this channel, I talk about blurred media and how it relates to black people or just blurred media in general or nerd media in general, like nerd content, comics and things like that. Sometimes I talk about black current events. Sometimes I talk about just different things and mentalities that we should have. And I I talk about a lot, but I want to start talking about and breaking down some of these old black sitcoms and movies that a lot of us used to enjoy and a lot of us used to watch. And the reason why is because a lot of them show messages that really distorted the way that we look at a lot of our relationships and the way that we just look at different sexes. So the way that we look at black men, the way we look at black women and how a lot of that was distorted and it was manipulated. And what I've been saying for a long time now is that when you go back and you watch these, there's a trend that shows that the white supremacists wanted us to view black men and black women in a certain way. And it shifted the way that we interact with one another. Typically, they like to demonize black men And make them seem like the villains, the big bad wolves, probably second place to overt white supremacists, but definitely villains, brutes, people who do a lot of very degenerate things. And the black women a lot of times are portrayed as at worst flawed individuals who made mistakes that aren't important enough to speak about or maybe are just a different perspective, quote unquote. And at best, they're just totally ignored and glazed over. If anything, they're somewhat still glorified as if what they said was tr- or, or did was understandable, truthful or humorous. So what I noticed in the show Fresh Prince, because that's what I want to talk about, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. That was m- probably my favorite black sitcom growing up. I used to think that shit was funny as hell. There were so many, so many funny moments and funny episodes in that show. And there also were a lot of serious episodes and there were a lot of real deep moments in that show. And there's a lot of things also too with it that we don't really get today. One big thing that we don't get is seeing a union, I guess, a union of a black man and a black woman being together. And we actually got to see that in a, for the most part, healthy way with Uncle Phil and Aunt Viv. We don't see that nuclear black family dynamic too much anymore. And it's really kind of a shame because we need to see those images. We need our children to see those images. And Fresh Prince provided that. And it didn't really create too many issues or tension, even within that relation. There may have been one. There may have been one. Now I think about it. Issue one or two, one or two episodes where Aunt Phil and Viv and Uncle Phil were not on the same page. And that was even later in the show. But for the most part, I mean, it has been great. And it it's a it was really a, a treasure because we just don't see it. Anyway, I don't want to get off topic. But the one thing that I want to talk about is how in the show Fresh Prince of Bel Air, the villain of the show essentially, if we're being honest, was Lou. Lou Smith, which was Will's father. He was portrayed as a deadbeat, as somebody who walked out on Will, as somebody who still was not really trying to be in Will's life, even after he rekindled his relationship with Will and surprised him and basically turned his world upside down. He was portrayed as a total heel and somebody that everyone should hate because of what he did and how he affected Will. The real villain, however, from my perspective, hear me out, y'all, is Aunt Aunt Vi. Aunt Vi is the villain of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And I'm going to give you a handful of reasons why she was the villain. Now, a lot of you all are probably listening to this and you're like, Cool Colas, how in the hell is 
Aunt Vi, or Vi, whatever the hell you want to call her, how is she the villain? That was Will's mama who wanted Will to have a better life. And that's why she sent him off to his auntie and uncle in Bel Air. How could she possibly be the villain? Well, y'all, let's look into it. The first reason that Vi was problematic was because she was a hypocrite. She was a hypocrite when it came to being a mother. One thing that I found interesting is that there was an episode where she came to visit Will and the family and everybody else in Bel Air. And when she was there, she was criticizing and kind of browbeating Aunt v while they were in Bel Air as if she wasn't really doing her job as a mother. She was chastising her about the way that she was taking care of her children and disciplining them and all this other stuff. And she was basically trying to act like she just was a better mother than Aunt Viv was. And what's interesting about that was she had sent Will out there to have a better life and better experience by being with Aunt Viv and Uncle Phil, meaning she gave the illusion that she trusted them enough only for her to come all the way there just to tell her that she wasn't really a good enough mother. My feeling is if you yourself felt like you were adequate or your situation was adequate, you would have had no reason to send Will elsewhere, right? So from my perspective, if she felt that chastising Aunt Viv made sense and that Aunt Viv wasn't the adequate mother that she was herself, then she would have basically had no reason to send Will out there in the first place because she herself could have just done a better job. But that's the thing. She knew that she wasn't doing a better job. So her doing that just shows how much she was a hypocrite. And so that leads to the second point and the second um, issue that a uh, reason why she was a villain. She was the main villain because of the fact that she really at a certain point kind of moved on with her own family and kind of just neglected Will. And she made that clear in the episode where she came there to visit Will or supposedly visit Will. And she had this whole new family with her. Now they try to focus on the fact that Will might've been jealous. Will wanted, you know, to be recognized and he wanted to, you know, spend time with his mom and her new family was trying to hog all the time with his mom. But what it kind of ended up leading to was Will was planning things with his mom and he was trying to do things with her and she was dipping out on him and not spending time with him and all this other stuff. And so when Will approached her about his feelings about it, she was very nasty and kind of passive aggressive. The show glazed over it like they always do, like all these shows do whenever women do things where they're out of pocket, out of line. And she basically said she doesn't need to really explain herself to Will. And it kind of is what it is. And this is her new boo. This is her new family. And it is what it is. Also notice that she didn't even end up with this guy. The guy's name was Robert. She didn't even end up with him because we didn't really see him too much even after all of that even happened. So you mean to tell me that you barely get to see your son. You send him out to live with his aunt and his uncle. And the, one of the only times you get to visit him, you spend time with your boo, who you could have spent time with any other time. And you totally neglect your son. Don't give him any attention, although you were right there with him and you don't really get to see him because Y'all are in two different states on two different sides of basically the United States. And you do all that only for you to not even still have a relationship with this man. And his child, too, because I don't remember seeing the child anymore either. Reason number three why Vi was a villain. Ultimately, Vi intervened in Will's life while he was doing something productive and pretended like it wasn't. The main situation where this happened was when the episode where Will became a car salesman. Will was doing something that he was good at because he was very good at being a car salesman and he was moving up in the ranks 
very, very quickly. He seemed to be making good money. He was selling nice cars. He was wearing these really fancy suits. And everybody seemed to have a problem with it. And so Vi flew all the way out to Bel Air just to pull her son out of his car dealership job that he got just to put him back in college where he was just going to rack up debt unless Uncle Phil probably paid for it. Although I think it was at the local community college. He was going to rack up debt only for him to try to go back out in the world to find a job. We all know college is super expensive. We all know that college not only is super expensive, but it's for the most part pretty expendable unless you have a certain job like you're trying to become a doctor or something like that or a lawyer. But for most other majors, it's pretty much expendable. It's just a big ass expense that just sends you back into a world to work with. If you're a black person, people who really just don't like you. So he already had a job and he seemed to be working with, at a black owned business at that. Because the top car salesman, unless he was just a manager, unless he was just a manager, was black. And the employees, I think they were black as well, too. Even the one that he was forced to fire, he was black as well, too. She pulled him out of that only for him to go back to school so that when he gets a degree, he can go back and find a job. And her reason for chastising him is because he was in a system for higher learning. One of the problems, and this is some old nigga shit, one of the problems with the old niggas is they get into this mode of symbolic accolades. So their mama and their daddy and their granny and all these other people didn't get to go to college because they didn't. They think that it's some type of cool accomplishment that their kid did. And what it's really doing is it's masking a lot of other problems. One problem that it's masking is the idea that they really didn't have a plan for their children. So they're sending them to college so they can just figure the shit out. The second thing that it's masking is the fact that they're going to accrue a whole bunch of debt that they either never or barely are going to be able to pay for in their jobs. And they got to pay for basically six months out of college. And they it also is ignoring the fact that College doesn't do anything to prepare you to work for yourself or have autonomy or ownership over your own thing. So I say all this basically to say that Will found a way to still be able to find a job and skip past the whole college thing and made a bunch of money and seemed to be good at what he did. And chances are, if he would have kept going, he probably could have been the main manager probably at that car dealership and he probably could have made buku money. But instead, his mama pulled him out of that to send him back to a debt house. And to possibly get maybe some type of job where he'd have to, where he probably he may or may not pay it back. I don't really know. Either way, out of all the times to fly out, that was a stupid ass decision. The next thing that I want to talk about when it comes to Will's mom is. And this is the worst thing that she did. Will has always been known to try to pull these slick ass pickup lines with chicks. Now, there's a lot of times Will Will's not successful at all. He sounds corny, he sounds stupid as hell. And essentially, what I noticed, though, is that with Will, he only had Lisa. Out, out of all the chicks he did, Lisa was the only chick who he seemed to have a very consistent relationship with. And so he was going to marry her. Now, clearly in the episode, the couple episodes that they had, they suggested that they weren't ready because they didn't know each other enough. And then that was the result is that they didn't end up getting married because there were still a lot of things that they didn't know about each other. But the way they ended it was as if they were just going to just wait a little while before they actually tied the knot and kind of did their thing. Now, a day before all of this went down between Lisa and Will, Will's mother slept with Lisa's father in a night of passion after they were arguing on a plane. So it was so basically she had a fling with the dad of Will's fiance. And what ended up happening was 
fast forwarding back to the moment where Lisa and Will were about to were end up calling off getting married at that moment. Vi and Lisa's dad jumped in and ended up getting married, which now made Will and Lisa stepbrother and stepsister at this point. So imagine you call off a wedding or um, a, a ceremony like getting married to a woman that you had a serious relationship for quite a while with. And you decide to call it off because of the fact that you guys just aren't ready, not because you all don't like each other, don't want to date anymore, but just because you aren't ready only for your mom and her dad to step in and get married instead, making you technically brother and sister, not by blood, but still brother and sister. How selfish, how fucked up is that? And she got no accountability for that. Will didn't get mad at her. Uncle Phil didn't get mad at her. Lisa didn't get mad at her father. Lisa didn't get mad at her. None of that stuff happened. It got glazed over and the episode ended. And the fucked up thing about that is two things happened. One, we never saw Lisa again. The second fucked up thing that happened was we never saw Fred again, which is her father. In other words, you ended a long term relationship. The only long term relationship that Will had over a fling, which you kind of crafted into a marriage only for us to never see or hear from your new husband ever again fucked up is that i don't know y'all the point that i'm trying to make though is that these are reasons why i believe she was the real villain because she made a lot of poor choices selfish decisions and actions that ended up negatively really affecting will at the end of the day now, some of you are listening to this and you're probably like, Kukolas, you left something out. You were supposed to talk about how she was wreaking hell on her sister when she was about to get into an interracial relationship. And I would probably tell you that was the only time I actually did agree with Vi. I thought that Vi made a lot of good points. I thought that the whole idea in, uh, of that was for black people to just be more accepting of the idea that sometimes it's okay for somebody who's black to date somebody who is white. That was the whole idea of the episode. And I think what they were doing was villainizing by, by saying that she was being discriminatory against somebody who was white. So I was actually with her because all Vi basically said was that you might be making a mistake because are you thinking about all the things that comes with you know, being married to somebody who is not black. And she said that I think you're making a terrible, terrible mistake. But I had some good points at that point, because at, even with me being pro-black, I've said before, black people need to be seriously careful when they date interracially, not because I'm trying to criticize anybody who chooses to date outside of their race, but because I think we really need to think about it. Think about the economic factors. If you pass away and your partner who is not black doesn't, all of your money is going to go back to them. So it's like all the black proceeds, like money, economics is going to go right back to somebody who is not black at all. And chances are most people who are not black are not going to funnel any of their resources, money, et cetera, back into black people because no people who are non-black or white have sy systematically done that for black people. The other thing to consider too is that there are a lot of black people who come up dead because, you know, these white people who they get into relationships with, they end up harming them, killing them, doing something bad to them, et cetera. Like that happens quite a bit too. So these are, I, I could, there's more reasons, but the point I'm trying to make though, is that these are just things that you should consider before you get into an interracial relationship and just making sure that your partner loves you for who you are specifically. That's a very important concept. And I think to some extent, that's what Vi was trying to get at, but they kind of villainized her and they kind of did extra. Anyway, I'm not trying to go off on a tangent. I'm just simply saying that some people probably would wonder why I didn't throw that in there, but that's because I actually agreed with her. Now, here's the thing. Vi overall was a woman who made a lot of poor decisions, was highly flawed, and made a lot of poor choices, which leads me to believe that one of her poor choices probably was also in men, which is why she picked Lou. There's a good chance that she probably knew that Lou probably wasn't worth anything. And don't get me wrong, Lou is a villain. 
He is absolutely a villain. So do not get me wrong. But we should not let Vi off the hook for making a poor choice in who she produced a child with. She never received accountability for that. He was just demonized for just not showing up for Will anymore. But did we talk about how she did all of these terrible things and selfish things that ended up messing with Will's life? Or ended up making Will feel some type of way or causing trauma for him that was never discussed. And I get it. We were at a time period where all these things weren't considered. But now that we're able to look back, let's look at all parts of this and realize that Vi, at the end of the day, was nothing but a self-serving bitch. And she was indeed the villain of Fresh Prince. Anyway, y'all, I hope y'all enjoyed the episode. I'm going to have a lot more to come, so make sure that you stay tuned. I'll talk to y'all later and I hope y'all have a good night.